Well, hello everyone. This is uh, Mr. Reeves, and I'm here with you now to help uh, seventh graders work their way through the um, CAS practice test. So I've got the page open here to the practice test. I'm going to go ahead and click on the uh, practice test button here. And we're going to begin. We're going to work our way through. We're just going to do this as a guest user in a guest session. And we're going to choose seventh grade. And we're going to choose the Math 7 practice test. Just going to keep all of those things going. Do the test. We're fine there going to continue. Now we're going to begin the test. So I'm going to break this test up into doing it five questions at a time. So we're going to go ahead and get started on question number one. Enter the value of five times the quantity of 13.5 minus 4.5. So if you remember your order of operations or PEMDAS, Of course, P stands for parentheses, E is exponents. We do multiplication and division from left to right, and then finally we finish up with addition and subtraction. So we're gonna start with the parentheses here, and it's actually, you don't do parentheses, you do what's inside the parentheses. So we're gonna go in here, and right here we're gonna do 13.5 minus 4.5. And since we don't have a calculator over here, they're not wanting us to use the calculator. I hope you wouldn't use one even if there was one available. 13.5 minus 4.5. If you subtract that, you get 9. And then, of course, we have 5 times 9. And 5 times 9, hope you know, is 45. So again, we worked inside the parentheses according to order of operations. Then we did multiplication, so the answer to number one we're looking for is 45. And now we're going to go ahead and click for the next problem. All right, so the number line below shows record low temperatures for four states, Hawaii, North Carolina, South Dakota, and Montana. And it says enter the difference in degrees between the record low temperatures in Hawaii and in South Dakota. So I'm going to go up here, and let's take a look at Hawaii. So Hawaii is right here at 12 degrees Fahrenheit, and South Dakota is down here at negative 58 degrees. And they are asking us for the difference. And hopefully you know difference tells us that we need to subtract. So I want the difference between those. So in fact, actually, when you're finding the difference with positive and negative numbers, you can go 12 minus negative 58 or negative 58 minus 12 as long as you take the absolute value. But I'm going to go ahead and do Hawaii, which is 12, and then I'm going to subtract a negative 58. Now be careful, you're subtracting a negative. It's not 12 minus 58, it's 12 minus a negative 58. And hopefully you all remember that subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. And I'm going to go ahead and do 12 plus 58. If I put that 2 on the 58, I get 60. And then 10 plus 60 is going to give me 70. So since this was degrees, the difference is going to be 70 degrees. All right, so I'm going to go down here to the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and type in 70, and I don't see any kind of degree symbol or anything like that. So I'm going to say, OK, the answer is 70, and I'm going to go to the next question. All right, so kind of switching gears here for the third question. Now we've got an algebraic expression. And they are asking us to find the one that is equivalent. So what they want us to do is they want us to take this expression and they want us to simplify. 
And when you're simplifying an expression, we've learned a couple different ways. One of the ways we simplify an expression is to apply the distributive property. That's not the case here because we don't have any multiplication going on. Another way we simplify expressions is by combining like term. And like terms have the same variable to the same power. In this case, right here, we have 4x. x is our variable. 4 is our coefficient. And right here, we have a negative 2x. And these are being added. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do 4x plus negative 2x. And when I add four positives to two negatives, I have four positives, which is more than two negatives. How many more do I have? I have two more. So the answer to these two terms added together is 2x. Well, next, I'm going to go ahead and combine this positive 3 and this positive 4. So I'm going to go 3 plus 4. 3 plus 4 is 7. And what were we doing to all these terms? Everywhere we had addition, they were nice to us. Everything's being added. So I end up with 2x plus 7, which of course is that choice right there. 2x plus 7. So I'm going to go ahead and pick 2x plus 7, and I'm going to go on to problem number 4. Problem number 4, similar to the one we just did, only this one looks a lot more scary. Remember when we were doing the previous problems, I said there's two ways that we simplify. We can distribute or apply the distributive property. And the other things we do is we combine like terms. I apologize for my sloppy writing. It's really hard to write neatly using this tablet that I'm using. All right, distributing is actually multiplication. That's the operation. And combining like terms is addition or subtraction. And again, if we go back to PEMDAS, or order of operations, multiplication comes before addition and subtraction over here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to apply the distributive property. So when I do that, I get negative 3.75. And then right here, I have a 2, positive 2, times a negative 4x. And that's either going to be a plus negative 8x, or I'm going to go ahead and write minus 8x. And then I have a positive 2, or a plus 2 that's being, a 2 that's being added, times a 6.1, and that's going to give me 12.2. So I took this part right here, and I applied the distributive property, and now that's what I have. Whoops, that part right there actually was that part right there. So this part here has become this part here. And now I'm going to go ahead and add this part here back on the end. Minus 3.25x. So that's that part there. That part really should have been in a different color. Oh, well. All right. So now we have taken care of the distributive property. Now we need to combine our like term. Well, subtraction is the same as adding a negative. So right here, I have a negative 8x. And right here, I have a minus... 3.25x. Again, these are like terms because they have the same variable to the same power. The coefficient here is a negative 8. The coefficient here is a negative 3.25. And when you combine those together, you get negative 11.25x. And then also, I have my like terms here. 
I have this negative 3.75 and this 12.2. So I'm going to put those two together. Negative 3.75 plus 12.2. And I'm going to go ahead and make that 12.20 because this one has two decimal points and that one has two decimal points. All right, now in this case, I want to combine them, but they have opposite signs. So I have to say, what do I have more of? I have more positive, so I know my answer is going to be positive. And then I'm going to have to find the difference between those two. So at this point, it's actually going to become a subtraction problem. So, you know, we're going to have to borrow here. We say, okay, I have zero. I need to borrow from this and make this 10. And 10 minus 5 is going to give me 5, but I can't take 7 from 1. So I'm going to borrow from this and make this 11. And 11 minus 7 is 4. And now that leaves me with 11 minus 3, and 11 minus 3 is 8. So I get 11, negative 11.25x here. I get a positive 8.45 here. And we're going to go ahead and put a plus between them. Now if we take a look at our answers over here, oh my goodness, none of these match what I have. So let's kind of take a closer look. It says select all the expressions that are equivalent to. So none of these are completely simplified. You can actually simplify this all the way down. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at what we have here. We know our x term here is 8x. So I see an 8x here and a negative 3.25x. So do you see that right there is the same as that right there? Right? And here's our 8.45 when we put those two together. So this one is definitely correct. This one right here, let's take a look at this one. 7x minus 2x. If I do 7x minus 2x, I get 5x, which is not what we're supposed to get. And 8.1 is also not what we're supposed to get. So this one is going to be a no. All right, if we take a look at this one, the only x term it has is negative 7.25x, and we know that's not correct. So this one is going to be a no. If we take a look at this one, it has negative 11.25x. That's what we wanted. And then this part is 12.2 minus 3.75. Well, if you take a look, that right there is what we did right there. So this one is also a Yes, so these are the two that we're looking for, and it says select all of them, so make sure that you don't just pick one correct answer and move on. On these problems that say select all, make sure you check all of the possibilities. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pick that one and that one, and then go on to our final problem for this video. All right, enter the decimal equivalent of 11 eighths. All right, so any fraction at all can be changed to a decimal by dividing the top by the bottom. So one option is to do 11 divided by 8 and see what we get. But let's go ahead and see what this would be if we changed it to a mixed number. So 8 goes into 11 one time. And 11 minus 8 is 3, so this is 1 and 3 eighths. So actually, I know that when I make this as a decimal, it's going to be 1 point something. Now, it's really good if you have some decimal fraction equivalents memorized. And one of the ones you really should memorize is eighths. Most of you know that one fourth is 0 0.25. One eighth is half of 0 0.25 or 0 0.125. And if you add those together, you get three eighths. 
because one fourth is two eighths. And what you get is 0 0.375. So the answer is 1.375. The other way we could have done that, I mentioned, is we could have done 11 divided by 8. And I'll go ahead and show you that one. So 8 goes into 11 one time. And then we subtract and we get 3. And then we go ahead and bring down the 0. 8 goes into 30 3 times. 8 times 3 is 24. I should have left myself more space here. And when I subtract, I'm going to get 6. Sorry. And I'm going to bring this zero all the way down. Whoops, all the way down. Eight goes into 67 times. Eight times seven is 56. Whoa, this is bad. And then we get a four. Finally, bring that last zero all the way down. And eight goes into 40 five times. So we get 1.375. Either way, but you really, really, really will benefit yourself if you can memorize your eights. So 1.375. All right, and that's going to conclude for the first five problems. We'll come back in the next video and return to number six.